Okay, welcome grade eight. So we're gonna go through division today. So I wanna go through the laws and some examples and then for you guys to do some sums. So when it comes to the laws of, just to remind you, when it comes to the laws of multiplication, um, what we do with multiplication is we're going to add our exponents. So if we have, say, negative 2x squared y multiplied by negative 3xy to the power 4, our, our strategy here is we always look at signs, then numbers, then variables. So um, negative times a negative is a positive. So that's a positive. We don't have to write the positive down. 2 times 3 gives us 6. And then you've got x to the power of 2 plus, there's an invisible 1 there. 2 plus 1 is 3. And then y to the power of 1 plus 4 is 5. Right? So if we look at the law of division, our strategy is the same. We're going to do signs, numbers, and then variables. Um, division. Division is a bit trickier because with division you can, for example, have, let's say we've got negative 2x squared y divided by, now once again when it comes to algebraic language, divided by can either be written like that, like you guys are used to, divided by 4xy to the power 4, so it can be written like that, or this is exactly the same thing, I can say negative 2 x squared y divided by 4 x y to the power of 4. So this is exactly the same thing. So what we do is, once again, it's first going to be our signs that we divide, then the numbers, then the variables. So as we do, the, as we do this example, I'll just sh I'll show you the law quickly. So it's a negative divided by a positive. So just like with multiplication, when you're dividing different signs, it means that your answer will be negative. So that's a negative over there. And then you've got 2, multi 2 divided by 4. So once again, it's basically 2 divided by 4. We'll, we, uh, we're going to get back to this now. So 2 divided by 4 is 2 over 4. So I'm taking this and I'm putting it into fraction form. Then you've got x to the power of 2 divided by x to the power of 1, right? And you, I'll do exactly the same sum over here in a sec. So what happens here is it's x to the power of 2 minus 1. Now remember when it came to multiplication, we added the exponents. But when it comes to division, we're going to minus the exponents. But now we've got an uh, uh, issue over here in that I've got, um, I've got y to the power of 1. So the first term I'm starting with is 1 minus 4. Okay, so let's just let's just analyze that first step if they gave it to us in this way over here. So this, you'll see you get to the exact same answer. So it's negative 2 over 4, so I'm keeping that there, negative 2 over 4. And then it's x to the power of 2 minus 1, because there's an invisible 1 there. And then that's on top, I have to put my y there, to the power of 1 minus 4. Okay, so... If I have a look at my next step, whether I'm coming from this side or, or the other side, let me just use a different color over there. So whether I'm coming from this side or this side, this, this would be my next step over there. What I'm doing now is I'm saying that gives me 2 over 4. What I can do is take my, when it comes to my numbers over here, I'm going to divide each number by the highest common factor. Okay, you divide by the highest common factor. So if you look at 2 and 4, the highest common factor there would be 2. So what I'm going to do there is I'm going to say 2 divided by, by 2. So in this case it's 2. So I'm going to say 2 divided by 2 and 4 divided by 2 as well. So if I have a look there, if 2 divided by 2 is 1. Now I can write the 1 there, but you'll see later on it's not necessary. 4 divided by 2 gives me 2. And then I'm left with x to the power of 2 minus 1 equals 1. So I just need to, I don't have to write the 1 over there. And I've got y to the power of negative 3. Okay. So my final answer in this case is going to be, 
I don't, uh, I'm applying a different law now. Whenever I've got the negative exponent, what I can do is I can actually, um, I can actually bring that negative exponent down. So what I'm going to have now is, it's basically a two at the bottom here. This y to the power of negative three, okay? The law says I'm allowed to make that a positive if I take it from the numerator to the denominator. If it was at the bottom, I take it from the bottom to the top, the sign changes. So in other words, that's going to now be y to the power of 3 on top. And then I've got x over there on top as well. So that's basically my answer for that particular sum. Right, so let's have a look at example 2, guys. Example 2. So it's a negative divided by positive, remember, a strategy here, um, according to Salsa M. Um, our, our strategy is we're going to look at signs first. Number two is numbers. Number three is variables. And then in terms of laws, there's basically two laws that we're using. The first law is x. if we have x squared divided by x, that's going to give us x to the power of 2 minus 1. Okay. Okay, right. So if we, if we have a look here, um, the laws that we're using here is two laws. The first law is it's, it's, uh, if we've got x to the power x to the power 2 over x to the power of 1, it's x to the power 2 minus 1. Even if... For example, you've got x to the power of 2 over x to the power of 3. We still basically, what's important is to, to know whether you're working with the numerator or the denominator. In this case, it's x to the power of 2 minus 3. Okay. And then the second law that we mentioned that we're working with is, we're working with a law that if you've got, say, a negative 2 there, that's going to be 1 over x to the power of 2. Or... If you add 1 over x to the power negative 3 there, then that will be x to the power of 3 over 1, right? So I think those are the two important laws, and then that's our strategy. And remember what signs is the same thing that we did earlier on, in that what we've got is, um, we've got, for example, a positive times a positive is a positive. When the signs are the same, my answer will be positive. So when I say a positive divided by... Okay, and if I use my sign over there, Kayla, a positive divided by a positive is equal to a positive. A negative divided by a negative is equal to a positive. And then the ones that will be negative, I'll do that in red for you guys. So if you have a positive divided by a negative, my answer will be negative. And then the last one is basically where you've got a negative divided by a positive your answer will be negative right so uh, negative divided by a positive your answer will be negative so it's important to first do your signs and then your numbers and then your variables um, the skill that you need in this case is basically you need to know your timetables okay so timetables is important because if you don't know your timetables you're going to need a calculator to just divide simple stuff simple numbers so based on that strategy and the laws that we have, let's finish this example and then I'm going to give you guys some sums to do. So it's a negative divided by a positive is a negative. So if we look at our signs over here, we can see this one, this particular one over here applies a negative divided by a positive. So that gives us a negative, right? Then we said when it comes to our numbers, the other thing that we're going to do is we're going to basically find... When, I, when it comes to our numbers, we're going to find the highest common factor and we divide both numbers by the highest common factor. Okay, so when it comes to our numbers, we basically divide both numbers. Both numbers, when I speak about, the, when I speak about both numbers, I'm talking about the number that's in the numerator and the denominator um, by the highest common factor. Okay, so if we have a look over here, um, I'm just using a different color just to make it easy for you guys to see what I'm doing. If I look at 4 and 2, my factors of 4 are, the factors of 4 
and 2. Just a quick reminder, the factors of 4 is 1, 2 and 4. The factors of 2 is 1 and 2. So in this case, my highest common factor is 2. So it's 4 divided by 2, and then 2 divided by 2 as well. Right? So if I have a look, that 4 divided by 2 gives me 2. Right? And then I've got my um, numerator. Remember we said that we could start and put everything as numerators. So it's x to the power. Now I'm busy with my variables. Now remember with my variables, I've got to use these laws over here. What's law 1? Law 1 I'm going to be using now. x to the power of 2, just have a look over here. x to the power of 2 minus 1. So it means that on top here, it's exactly the same thing. There's a 2 there. There's an invisible 1 there. So that's x to the power of 2 minus 1. And then I've got y to the power of, there's an invisible 1 over there. So that's 1 minus 3. Just according to algebraic language, if there's no number by the power, it means that there's a 1, right? So at the moment, that's how my sum looks. But remember, I don't want the negative. Um, well, let me first simplify. So it's 2x y to the power of 1 minus 3 gives me negative 2. Okay. At the moment, I've still got this over 1. If there's, once again, according to algebraic language, if there's no fraction, it means that it's over 1. So when I'm busy with division, I want to try to keep everything as a fraction. So my final answer, um, and that's going to be my final answer in this case, is I, want, I don't want a negative uh, exponent. So I want to get rid of this uh, y to the power negative 2. Remember now, I'm going to be using law number 2 over here. So the 2x stays on top, right? But what's going to happen here is my y is going to move to the bottom now. And that becomes y to the power of 2. Why? Because when, I'm, when, I, when I want to get rid of a negative exponent, I just have to move the numerator to the denominator. If it's in the, at the bottom, I need to move it to the top. Okay. So I trust that makes sense and that we are now ready to do some questions. Okay, guys, can we please do these two sums? So please write it down pause it, pause your video, and then after that I will be doing the answers. Thank you. Okay guys, so have, let's have a look at these two sums quickly. Remember we said our strategy over here. Our strategy is our signs first, then we want to do our numbers, and then we want to do our variables. Okay, and we can't forget about our laws around um, division. So in terms of signs, we're going to do number one. If we look at it, it's a negative divided by a positive. So we know that a negative divided by a positive will give us a negative. Now one thing about the negative sign, it can either appear in front of the, uh, the term or it can, exp it, it, it can basically be on top or at the bottom. So that means that it's a negative term. And then we said when it comes to our numbers, we have to find our highest common factor. So the highest common factor of 2 and 8 is 2. So in other words, I can say 2 divided by 2 is 1 right and then 8 divided by 2 is 4 and then I've got over here x I'm I've done my numbers I can do my variables now so it's 2 minus 1 and then I've got y to the power of if I start on top there it's 3 minus 5 right so what we'll notice that the answer there is negative I don't have to put the 1 in if I have a variable next to it. So that's the same as I'm um, saying 1x. So I don't have to put the 1 over there. If you did put it there, they can't mark it wrong, but it's just more correct. So it's y to the power of 3 minus 5. That gives me negative 2, right? Over 4. And then remember, we said in terms of our final answer, what we want is we don't want to be working with negatives. There must be negative exponents. So my final answer is going to be negative, and then I've got x on top. I don't have to have the 1 there, right? 4, y to the power of, remember that comes to the bottom now. Okay, so that becomes y to the power of 2. Okay, and that's my answer over there. Um, you can mark that correct if you have that right. Then if I have a, a look at number 2, there's a law over here by number 2 that's important, which is that anything to the power of naught is equal to 1. So you can even check it out on your calculator. You can put the 100 to the power of naught, it will give you 1. 
So the same thing with y to the power of naught, x to the power of naught is 1. This is a uh, this is probably, um, I think we've done two laws, so this would be your third law. I know that sometimes you have it in different orders, but this would be law 3. So if we have a look over here, it's in this case it's a negative divided by negative. It's a positive, but remember, I don't have to actually physically write the positive there, right? Then I can work out on my numbers. So my highest common factor of 3 and 9 is 3. So in this case, I divide both of those by 3. right? So it's 3 divided by 3 is 1 over 9 divided by 3 equals 3. And then on top here, I've got x to the power of 1 minus 1. Because remember, there's an invisible 1 there and an invisible 1 over there. And I'm left with y to the power of 4 minus 6. Okay. So that will give me an answer of x to the power of naught, y to the power of 4 minus 6. That gives me negative 2 over 3. Now remember, according to my law here, anything to the power of naught is 1. So that's 1 on top. So my final answer in this case is going to be 1 is going to go on top. You'll see why now. Over, that's x to the power of negative 2. So that becomes, sorry, y to the power of negative 2. So that becomes y to the power of 2. And then there's a 3 over there. So in fact, Maybe a better option is I can I can start with a 3 and then I'm left with y to the power of 2. Once again, the law that I'm using there is because I've got a negative over there, this whole expression comes to the bottom. And so that's my that's my answer for those two sums. Okay. So I trust that helps you guys um, with this particular section. Okay, everybody, can you please now try to do number three and four? And then we'll mark it in um, once you're done you can just uh, unpause it so pause it for now try to do number three and four and then once you're done with number three and four you can check if your calculations are correct thank you right good day everybody again welcome back after you've done the sum so remember it's signs numbers variables laws that's what we're focusing on a negative divided by positive in this case that's going to give us a negative right then the highest common factor of 2 and 8 is 2. So I'm going to divide that by 2. And I'm going to divide the 8 by 2. So in other words, I've got 1 over 4. And then over here with the x, it's 2 minus 1 because there's an invisible 1 there. With a y, I've got 4 minus 6. Right? So now I can do my next step. So I've got negative. Um, I've got a 1 over there, so that's x to the power of 2 minus 1 is 1. I don't have to write the 1 down according to algebraic language. 4 minus 6 is a minus 2 over there, and I've got a 4 there. And then my last step is I don't want, to, I don't need the 1 over there because I do have an x there, so I can just say x, and that's 4y to the power of 2, right? And if I have a look at number 4, it's a negative divided by a negative is a positive. So I, I don't have to write the positive sign there. My highest common factor of 4 and 12 will be, four, sorry, be, before, between 8 and, and 12 would be 4, remember? Um, so that's going to be 8 divided by 4, which gives me 2. And then 12 divided by 4 is 3. And then I've got x to the power of, I'm starting with the numerator there, 3 minus 4. And remember I said if I've got y and a y there, I can just cancel it out. Or it's going to end up being y to the power of 0. So I've got 2 x to the power of negative 1 over 3. So in this case, my final answer is going to be the 2 over 3 will stay there. But my um, x comes to the bottom and that is basically my answer.